The following program is produced by the Tech Talk Radio Network. Hey everybody out there in Radio Land, this is James Young from the Rock Band Stick. If you are technically challenged, if you got trouble with that computer, here's because Lord knows I do, you need to listen to Tech Talk Radio. Welcome to another episode of Tech Talk Radio. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Justin Lemmy. And we are the show that is here for you to talk about computers, technology, the internet, and stuff <laughs> pretty much everything around that sometimes we diverge uh yeah but i'll tell you what you know one of the things we didn't get a chance to talk about this past week is got to be microsoft's big announcement of windows 11 and you know it's funny because most people are saying well how big an announcement was it that all this info was out beforehand mm. the screenshots the you know people are saying that i already got it and then of course this was given way to a lot of people who, you know that were saying hey i got code you can get code here the next thing you, know, you download it and you infect your system. Some people are saying that was kind of that was kind of silly to get mm-hmm. out because people are going to know. I'll, I'll go online, I'll find it because we, they've been doing that with previous builds, yes. right? Yes. And you know that yeah. I don't know. You know, it, it was it was kind of a, I, I think the one thing that stuck out to me was the announcement. I think when I think it was actually I don't recall seeing anything prior to the announcement on this. So correct me if I'm wrong, but. Right. The thing that really got me that I heard about after the announcement was that Windows 11 was going to be more focused on security, uh-huh. and nope. they were now going to require the use mm. of the TPM 2.0 chip, which uh, it's 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 it stands TPM stands for a Trusted Platform Module. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a a hardware security key to your motherboard or just to your system in general. Um, anyway, Windows announced that they were going to require this. Now, some newer motherboards come with a TPM chip already built in. Right. If not, you can always buy an aftermarket chip that will plug directly into your motherboard, and it will be the TPM 2.0 chip. So normally these chips sold on eBay or whatever. Right. For like, right. For like $2.50, $2.50, right? Yeah. The moment Windows announced that they were requiring TPM 2.0, the sales of those and the price of those went viral. Yeah. It got to like $100 per chip. People were just literally, scalpers were buying up the entire inventory of TPM 2.0 chips and then scalping them at, what, five times, six times the price? Six no, times, the, yeah. 600 times the price? No, it's been crazy. Like um the the thing is is that the minimum hardware requirements that were in that uh, are actually saying that they don't require it to be enabled. But yeah. but see that's the and that's the thing that's confusing. It's, it's the scare tactic. Yeah, it's confusing a lot of users out there going, wait, so I have to go buy a new computer to be able to because you know that. Yeah. So for those that don't know the upgrade path, if you remember when we went from seven to ten, Microsoft was kind enough to say, well, we want you to upgrade to ten because. It was a more secure platform yep. to them. Uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. they said, we want you to go there. Um, you notice I'm bypassing eight. But they're saying, we want you to go to 10. But, uh, and they made that available. Well, they're going to do the same thing with Windows 10. So, which I don't understand. I was honestly thinking that Microsoft was looking at a way that it was going to be able to pad its pockets a bit. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, because let's face it, more and more people like cars. You know, we're hanging on to our cars now an average of 12.1 years, which now it's going to go longer because you can't find chips to go out and buy cars <sighs> yeah. you know, inexpensively. Yeah. Yeah. So people are going to hold on to their cars longer. But, I mean, we're doing the same thing with our PCs. We're holding on to our PCs anywhere now from, you know, five to seven years, if not longer. Um, and so I thought this could be a great way to get people to go ahead and, oh, I'm going to spend another 100 bucks. All right, I get the newest OS. Windows mm-hmm. 10 will still work, but now I got the latest and greatest. And that's not the case. They want everybody to go from 10 to 11. Yeah. By 2025. By 2025. So, yeah. I don't know. My, my general thought is, we, we, you know, you just touched upon this a little bit ago about the shortage of chips. Yeah. Right? So, you've now you've got this demand mm-hmm. for a chip, the, the TPM 2.0, the Trusted Platform Module chip, that Windows is strongly suggesting that you put in your computer. <laughs> right. If you know what I mean, notice the henchmen behind me. Yeah, the, the right? strongly suggesting, yes. The strongly <laughs> suggesting, right? So that's that's the that's the stance they're taking. So what you got is you got a worldwide shortage on chips, and now you have a demand 
for this new chip that previously not a lot of people needed. And now Windows or Microsoft is trying to make people say, you know, you need this and they're, they're going to scare them into it. What do you think it's going to do to the market? I mean, right now, you, you you can't buy a TPM chip for less than 50 bucks. Right. Where originally it was just a few bucks. Well, and, a couple bucks. Yeah. You know, uh, that's the way it was going to work for many people. And I'm sure, I was wondering if they were going to work that into the build for those that bought the <laughs> the OEM or they bought, you know, were they going to get it, get it included? You know, is it going to be, it. so now, you know, it's, it's going to be really, it's going to be really tough for people to, to swallow that bitter pill of having to upgrade. And most people will say, oh, I'll just keep working this till 2025. And then it'll be even costlier to okay. upgrade. But again, uh, I did mention some of the newer motherboards mm -hmm. are coming with TPM yeah. chips yeah. embedded in them uh, because, you know, the industry is eventually going to go that way. I think Microsoft's just trying to be like, hey, nobody wants to touch the ball. I'll touch it first. Let's go. Right. We'll make you know? it available for you vendors, uh, manufacturers, yeah. the We're Dell be... and, and all the other ones to start yeah. selling systems with it. And that'll, I mean, that'll be in big letters. So, oh, TPM en enabled. T yeah, you know. TPM enabled. That's going to be the new sticker on on you know right? on, on the package, right? <laughs> we TPM enabled. It's like whoa, people have I no know, idea I what it the is. Best one, <laughs> bro. I got I got the new Intel uh, i i twelve TPM <laughs> superstar, bro. <laughs> But like, like do, you, do you have any idea what that means? No, man, it just sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm powered by TPM. Yeah, uh, it's but it's going to be confusing for most of the average user. I think so. And you know, and you know, you got you got the tech heads <sighs> that'll know what it is. They'll be able to sell more PCs that way. Because well, sure. you know, you go and you go somewhere. It's the guy's going to go. Tactic. The guy's going to go. Well, you got to have that TPM enabled. You got. Yeah, I want to sell you this, but you got to get it. You they know, they are experts at creating FOMO. <laughs> yeah. FOMO, fear of missing out. Right. You know. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 going to be interesting to see what happens with the silicon market, with the demand of the TPM 2.0 chips. If Microsoft is going to walk back, you know, they kind of walked it back a little bit. I think you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um. But. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to find out what happens with Microsoft on this one. I, am, I don't want to upgrade to Windows 11 right now. I never no. want to upgrade to a new operating system Wait, wait, system wait, wait. Hold first. on. You don't want something that looks more Mac-like? <laughs> yeah, right. You know what? That's funny that you say that. Um, that actually was not even in my thought process, but now it is. Uh, no, I mean, but seriously, I just, with every new OS, you know, yeah. there's, there's problems. And remember, uh, when I built this computer... You know, I had built it originally on Windows 7. Mm -hmm. Then we upgrade to Windows 10, and then everything went wrong. Remember, I had all the problems with the computer not wanting to shut down. The driver issues. Yeah. All that stuff. And I had that for months. I I want to say a, almost a year. Yeah. I dealt with it. And then all of a sudden, one day, magically, it was fixed. So that was the time that Was that them. one of the upgrade builds that they had put up? I mean, Or not the upgrade, it's, just the... <sighs> I don't think so. I think it was. I think it was just a hot fix. Yeah. I mean, because I didn't do anything. Like I just woke up one day and came down. And my computer was shut down still. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. You know, because I had shut it down the night before. So it it takes Microsoft time to come up with these fixes. Now, if you want to be a a glorified beta tester that's not getting paid, instead you're paying them, then by all means, go for Windows 11 right off the bat. Be one of the people that help others by showcasing the. The problems. No, I, just I know. Don't want to be one of those people. Members of Windows Insider, which is a, it's kind of like a. I don't want to say a beta testing program. I don't want to call it that. But Windows it's Insider actually getting the glorified bill. version of it. But yeah. kind of, yeah, yeah. They're getting, they're getting, it, and we'll, they'll hopefully be able to find any bugs that come up, and and when it is released in the fall. So don't go looking for it. Don't go looking yeah, no. on the websites. Don't go looking, you know, in any of the share sites. The dark web. Yeah, don't do that. Especially, yeah. You know whether you know what you're doing or not, don't do it because yeah, you're gonna you're not gonna find the completed product, yeah. And you're just gonna delay things and you're yeah. gonna hurt other people, by, yeah, by doing it. So don't yeah, do it. I would I would honestly say you know I'm I was on the fence when Windows 10 came out uh, mm -hmm. and I remember it was like okay it's gonna do this all right this is cool I like the fact that you had that upgrade path to go from seven to ten they made it easy which even today you can still go. I know you can still go from 7 to 10 and do it yeah. without spending a dollar if you've got a licensed copy of Windows 7 on your sure. system. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, just got to know where, where to find it. But, you know, I, I liked that, and that made it easier. But, again, 
I really did like Windows Seven. I saw a. Uh, it was um, very solid. Yeah, it was, and I, it, I'm. I felt thick. I saw a meme, and it scared me. Because think about it. Okay, Uh-oh. think about this. Think of all the different builds that we've had for Windows since you know the DOS days. It was ninety five, right? Then ninety eight, yeah. Then ninety eight SE, yeah. Then you had well, you can consider Windows two thousand. It was more of a. It was kind of like trying to integrate the office with the right, home. Right. You had Windows 2000 Home. You had Windows 2000 Office. We'll not count that. Yeah. You go from 98 SC to Windows XP. Wait a minute. Right? XP came out after 95 and 98? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm going to need your tech card there, Andy. <laughs> Folks, from now on, Andy is no longer with Tech Wait, Talk Radio. Hold on. Am I totally old? Did I just have a senior moment? You had a very senior oh, moment, Oh, my Mr. Lord. Mr. Tech Talk Radio. Uh, I, wait a Are minute. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. I was think th- about the years. Bro. Think of DOS. Then we went from. <laughs> oh yeah. Are we gonna do this? Wait, okay. wait. You're right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So okay. we. Okay. So we went from XP. Yep. Okay. From XP, you the, went to ME. ME, which was bad. Which was really bad. Okay. So really going bad. back to your original thought. Okay. Let's start with the meme again because let's No, 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 no. You're not editing this. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. You're going to keep this I'm not. In. <laughs> okay. Okay. But we're just going to we're going to say we're going to rewind it, folks, about two and a half minutes. Okay. So <laughs> your point, please say it again. What were you going to say? Well, my point was you had the build of Windows XP. Yep. Then you had the build of ME. Yep, there you go. And it was bad. So but what XP came out good. after ME? Okay, so first off, XP was good. Uh-huh. ME was bad. Right? Yeah. So, okay, b- by your logic, the next one should be good. Right, right. So after ME, you had uh, Windows Vista. Which was also bad. Which was, okay, So arguably, did we just not include Windows? We don't, We just skipped over ME. That's we just why. skipped over it. Okay. So, so that because it was that bad. All right. But, but Vista. Now, Vista was, okay, this is interesting because Vista was kind of a love-hate. Right. You had on one side of the fence the people that had all the problems, yeah. and there were a lot of them. Vista was just a dog. Okay, it really. Then is on terrible. the other side of the fence, you had people like myself that had Vista, and never had a single problem. Are you kidding me? How'd you never. luck out? I don't know. So that's what I'm saying. It was a love hate. You had people on one side of the fence who had problems, were obviously more vocal yeah. with said problems. Then you had people like me on the other side saying eh, Vista's fine. Yeah. Okay, so then after Vista, you have Windows 7. Which was great. Which is a massive hit. Yeah. It was a big change, too, from what Absolutely. you saw with Vista. Except they yes. kept a couple of little elements of Vista yes. in there. Yeah. And that was pretty much a big adjustment. So then after 7, you got to wait a couple years, uh-huh. they come out with Windows 8. Windows 8. Which they were really buying into the whole tablet, touchscreen right. feel. And people were like, no. Yeah. That's not who well, we think you are. Wasn't that around the same time that Microsoft wanted to get into the hardware business? It seemed like well, yeah. they were kind of moving were, in that direction. This was, this was right around the time when, well, no, there was a few more years separated between this and the Microsoft Surface coming right. out. But they were heading oh, yeah. in that direction. They wanted to create that OS. People did not buy it. No. So then Microsoft comes out with Windows 8.1. Now, people thought it's a glorified update. Microsoft said, no, this is a completely different version of 8.1. Some people are like, why didn't you call it Windows 9? Yeah. So on 8, one 8. Side 8.1 of the camp, is actually really Windows 9, if you think about it. It, it right? is. Yeah. So on one side of the camp, you got the people that say 8.1 is just an extension of 8. Then you got the other side is Windows 8.1 is actually Windows 9. But they were trying to tie their image into Windows 8 with the yeah. tiles and touchscreen. Yeah. Yeah. But they're like, hey, we listened. We heard you. Shut up. We added a start button. <laughs> Buy it. Like, that's literally what they were saying. I okay, feel so, so stupid. I think right? in 95. No, I do. 95 came oh, after XP. Like, okay. what the heck? No, I'm, I'm feeling like a total uh, yeah, I know. guilt. So, yeah, I, know. I, I owe my tech card to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for a week. Yeah, and a um, pizza. So, <laughs> next week, next week will be just me and Sean. <laughs> Please, everybody, direct your insults to, to me. Tune in, oh, folks, my next God. week. It's hey, going to be Justin and Sean In all show. fairness, I just came back from Palm Springs. It was 127. I maybe fried my brain a little. And just not a, a little. Yeah, I'm, that might have been it. But, I mean, you okay, live so, in the desert, and 127 is hot to you? Yeah. Whew. So we should we shouldn't have, So we mentioned ME, but we shouldn't have mentioned ME. Okay. No, but we, we didn't even mention but, Microsoft Bob. 
Okay, which I still Wait, have a what? copy of. Microsoft Bob was put out. But hold, but hold on, before we even do this, before right. you touch on that, we got to finish our story. Okay, go ahead. All right. So yeah. well, you you had you had you had uh, Windows unofficial nine, yeah, unofficial which is Windows eight point one. Yeah. Right? Then you had Windows ten. Right. Another good one. Okay. Yeah. So then now what's next? So going back to your original point, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's cut, recap. Good XP. Bad ME Vista. Good Windows seven. Bad Windows eight. Good Windows ten. Bad <laughs> Windows eleven. <laughs> yes. That's so, what I'm wondering. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, like. It just reminds me of Vista. It kind of reminds me. You know, let's change the interface. You know, and the thing yeah. is, a lot of users that we don't want to change. We want to just we wanted to do like you said uh, a couple of weeks ago. Indexing. We need a better indexing. Oh my system. gosh, the uh, indexing is horrible. Yeah, needs to be a better file system. Uh, that needs to be easier to use, easier to find stuff. Don't don't present me with stuff. Let me know where my stuff is, and then that's what yeah. I will be used to. Yeah. It's exactly. like them adding, you know, and a lot of people don't know, you know, this this new edition we've seen. Some people have been really bugged by, you know, this little weather thing in the in the yeah. bottom right. <laughs> it's really easy to get rid of. I know. Just right click it. Go to So you right yeah, you right click yeah. it. Uh-huh. You go to um News and Interest. News and Interest, and uh -huh. then you've got, you know, open on hover. You can get rid of that, show icon and text, you get rid of you just turn it off. Just yeah. completely turn off boom. and boom. It's it'll not go just away. weather. You're not looking for the word weather. That's, yeah. That that little bar with the weather is literally called news and interests. The news and interests, yes. Because if you click on it, it brings you a lot more than just the weather. So. Yeah, because I've I've been working on a program that you know you, I accidentally hover over it and then it blocks what I'm supposed to do next on the program. Yeah, and it just drives you nuts. So yeah, yeah I, you can get rid of it. I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm not sure what to think. Yeah. About that. Uh, Windows 11. Um, but, so it's going to uh, be available in the fall for anybody wondering. So that means you've got <sighs> a bit. fall, September, See, October, September. November. Yeah, like let's get about uh, two years. You and figure you give it a couple of years? I'll give it a couple of years yeah. before I get it. But you see, that's the thing. Everybody said, well, you guys got to be the beta testers. Mm -mm. Maybe we'll put it on one machine. I'll put it on a virtual machine. A virtual machine. Uh, speaking of that, what people don't know what virtual machines are. Oh, well. I'm so glad you asked, Andy. Yeah, because my son I've got I, some great news. So I, I was visiting my son, uh, in Palm Springs, who is a, a, a techie, got into the tech business. Oh, did he? Used he? To sit, yeah, we were laughing because we were in the kitchen, and, and you know the kitchen's been remodeled in the house in California, and we were remembering that's where my desk was when I had my Laser 286 that I would start taking apart, and that's when I started started playing with builds and installing DOS and. Installing it from floppy, remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. and he would sit. Wait, and watch. are we talking about three point five? Are we talking about five point two five? Five point two five. Oh, yeah. That's I mean, we're stuff. we're going old school. Oh, you were. Going old he would school? sit on the floor and he would watch. And he was even there when I had my Apple IIe, and he would watch it. And he's got into the tech business now. So, so if people ever ask you, can I run? Can I still run Windows XP? You know, uh, yeah, of course you could on a Windows ten machine. Uh huh. And you could do that all with a virtual machine. You can, but but the thing is, you need. So a virtual machine is you're going to have to have a host. Now, uh, granted, um, VMware is who we're talking about here primarily. Now there mm -hmm. are f other free versions. You're you're obviously welcome to look up different versions of virtualization technology. What we're talking about is VMware. And that's right. a company. I believe it was owned by Dell, and now it's owned by. I, I, I can't remember. It, major, major player. If you look it up, let me know. Right. Um, anyway, you need a host. And to do that, you can either just get the Windows app called VMware Desktop, which allows you to just basically run VMware on top of Windows, but in a, a very mm, constrained box, if you will. Right. The real pros, when you see a lot of things in, in your workplace, you connect to servers, file servers, print servers you connect to, Right. Right. Almost granted, those things are virtual machines. There is probably 20 PCs or 20 servers running on a single physical piece of hardware. And the way they do that is you have what's called ESXi, and that's the host. It's kind of like a Linux. Right. A Linux base sits on top of the server, talks to the hardware. Then from there, you deploy your virtual machine. So let's say you have a Windows XP machine that you want to play around with. You can virtualize it. You can make a virtual computer with virtual hardware from that time yeah and and then you can mess around with it or 
let's say you want to run, try out Linux, you want to learn Linux, you can deploy Linux in virtual machines. And then let's say you mess something up as you normally would when you're learning a new operating yeah, system, yeah, of course. you're going to mess stuff up. When you mess it up, you just simply delete the virtual machine and redeploy it. Heck, you can even make a backup of your virtual machine, go in, make your messes, and then come out and redeploy from that backup. So you never have to be like, sit back and go, wow, I've just destroyed my entire machine. I can't do anything with it anymore. Right, right. right. So yeah, VMware is awesome. And again, there's other free alternatives that may be uh, harder to set up. I don't know. I, VMware has been one of the easiest ones to, it has. to use. And, and you, can, you can get ESXi for free from VMware.com. You have to go there. You have to sign up for an account. Um, you have to jump through a few tiny hurdles, but you can get your own copy of ESXi that doesn't require a license. Now, if you want other features of ESXi, again, that's the host, then you have to pay for the license. But you can get ESXi for free, and that's the basis of VMware. Then from there, all you need is to find the actual, uh, like if you think about burning a DVD or a CD, mm -hmm. um, you have the, uh, what, um, what's that, the ISO, ISO. ISO image, yeah. So it's, it's equivalent to an ISO image. So all you have to do is just go find those and deploy it. And uh, you can actually go on the, on the web. Now, there's been some big changes this year in uh, VMware. Uh, number one, uh, the CEO of the company in uh, January of this year actually stepped to, uh, to go back to Intel. Mm -hmm. All right. Then you had in April, uh, Dell kind of got rid of its shares. And then uh, in May, uh, they, took a, they got a new CEO. So it looks like, I mean, the company does really well. You can find them at VMware.com. That's W-A-R-E.com. They're still I'm owned. Still, they have a large amount of ownership by Dell Technologies. Okay, so okay, so Dell primarily owns them. All right. Yeah. I, th I thought so. I knew they had them all at once. But, yeah, so I got to say, though. Uh, but they're, they're you know, split. They're like two companies. Yeah they, yeah. yeah, they let them do their own thing. I remember VMware from probably 15 years ago. Yeah. Hearing about it and thinking, wow, you can virtualize something. But it was just in its infancy. Right. And then, honestly, when Dell bought them, that's when they just took off. And now you... You can't go to any data center without finding out that almost everything you see is a virtual machine Yeah, sitting on a piece of physical hardware. Each one of those servers you see with all those blinky lights in the rack <laughs> could be lights. hosting 50 virtual machines. I think that's what we call the show. Either blinky lights or Andy has fried his brain. So I'm not Something sure which about one. That. Let's, maybe we'll go with blinky lights. Yeah. All right. We'll take a quick break. Come back with more of Tech Talk Radio. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Justin. Let me find us on the web at techtalkradio.com. We'll be right back. And now back to Tech Talk Radio. Hi, this is Colin Mockery of Whose Line Is It Anyway? You're listening to Tech Talk Radio. I don't know how it works. It's all magical stuff to me. Welcome back to Tech Talk Radio. I'm Justin Lemmy. I'm Andy Taylor. Okay, a little warning I wanted to share. Okay, mm -hmm. a little, little word of warning. Wait, now? Yeah. Right in the middle I've of the been, show. <laughs> right in the middle of the show. Right in the middle of the show. So, yep. you know, if you missed that first segment, you're here. This is a warning for you. Uh, and this harkens back to the old Tech Talk Radio days with uh, Mike, uh, Mike O'Brien, who's still out in Southern California. He, does, uh, he has a company. They do, do a lot of networking and all that stuff. But um, I remember uh, it was June we were doing a show back then, and this would have been in 90, I want to say 97, maybe. Okay. He uh, he would go on a service call, you know, and you always have a little bag with him. When you go on a service call, you have your little toolkit with torque tools, and you got all these fun things. You had floppy diskettes and floppy drives and extra CD drives and maybe a... a God, I'm so glad I'm younger. Yeah, maybe a hard drive or two <laughs> that would weigh 20 pounds. You didn't have external drives back then. Um, and, you know, you'd go see a client, and then you always had, like, uh, like wipes to clean you had a the CD screen. binder full of DVDs and stuff that you burn. Yes, tools. CDs. And, yes, yeah. CD binder. CD images. Be like, yes, that that one illegal copy of Windows that you were like, "Yo, I'm not supposed to do this, but if you give me like twenty bucks right now, I'll just go ahead and throw on a free copy of Windows." Yo, I'm not saying like, Mike ever did that. Oh, but I guess. <laughs> but he so it and he always, wait. Hold on, wait. No, I you didn't. didn't. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you're listening, yeah. <clears throat> but he would he would he would go and he would have his can of, of air, compressed air, 
because you know you need that because you get to houses where they have a dog, they have cats, yeah. they have the computer that is underneath the counter that is just a, a just a magnet for your dust bunnies, mm-hmm. um, and he would clean that out. Well, just a reminder: if you are going anywhere, for our listeners that are in. Anywhere, really. I mean, look what happened in Portland this past week. Mm. Uh, Portland had 106 degree, 112 degree temperatures, something like that. Yeah. I mean, this is in a city where they usually don't get that hot. Like, usually like 72 Yeah, it's degrees. beautiful. Like, Huntington Beach this past week was a nice 73. Whereas mm-hmm. where I was at, and I took a picture of it, 127 degrees is what my car was registering. Now, you know it's normally going to be maybe yeah. about 120 is what it actually was. Yeah, but yeah, but I don't still. know if you can tell the difference. But but Mike went on a service call once, and he had his Palm Pilot, because that's when you had Palm Pilots that were huge, in his uh, bag. So ancient. Got his, got out of his Montero, go, goes into the clients, and is talking to them and realizes he didn't get his bag. He goes out to his bag, and he's wondering, what's all that stuff inside his car? The compressed air exploded in oh, the car. Yep. Because it gets hot and the heat gets up and it took out his Palm Pilot, took out a, uh, you know one of the disk drives that he had with him, probably broke a few CDs. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to go anywhere, take your technology out. Also, if you have a dash cam, this happened to you, too. Oh, yeah. And happened I, to me I, as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. We both had the Cobra, which we love, Cobra, yep. Cobra dash cams, the battery split on them. So yeah. um, if you're going to go anywhere and you've got, you know, a web a dash cam, don't leave it in the sun. If you well, can, disconnect it. I, I mean, I try to disconnect it um, usually when I'm just parking it anywhere in public. Yeah. Because it's just one more target for a thief to be like, hey, I need a new dash cam, you yeah. know, and they'll just break your window and steal it. So I try to, if I'm in public, I really, and it's sad to have to say that. Now, I get it. If you live in a rural area or a small town, you probably don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But living in the big city, yeah. it, you do. And everywhere you go, I just try to take it off my window. Take Yeah, get it out of there. Even radar detectors. Yep, that you know, too. Doing that whole bit. Um, I have an Alcam, which I still have, but, you know, the service. So Alcam was a great product. We talked with the CEO of the company here a couple of years ago about what they were doing. And it was so exciting because basically it's a dash cam that stays on. And it uses yeah. a 4G connection, so if it gets uh, somebody walking by your car trying to break in, it'll notify you, just like a home security camera, even if you're away from your car. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is, is Alcam went through a bit of a problem. Uh, they got sold, and when they got sold, uh, the company, the new company came in and said, well, okay, so it's no longer $99 a year. It's uh, going to be $200 a year. Yeah, And no. most people said, ah. Oh. So I let mine just flounder. Just, yeah. So I use it. As a deterrent right now, it still yeah. works. I can say, okay, presto, and it will take image, but it won't upload it. It won't, and they took away the ability to connect via Bluetooth to save that video. Well, doesn't it have like a, an SD card slot? Nope. Nope. Oh. It was all done through the cloud. But it, what used to be that you could connect via Bluetooth and you could transfer that video, whatever yeah, you but captured. Yeah, of course, if you don't want it, yep. Mm-hmm. But if you didn't, you know, have a membership, but they got rid of that. But they just recently announced that if you have an older Alcam, and I will give them this, uh, I'm still not happy with it. Um, they have brought the price down. So now for a year, <laughs> for one ninety nine, one seventy nine. <laughs> oh geez. So you know, I'm still in glory about it. She said it's probably worth it, but I, you know, I don't. No, know. it's not, dude. I just literally bought Nexar, right? Yeah. Nexar the camera. Next, I just bought dash a cam. brand a dash cam. I I just bought that. It's a cloud based system as well but it wait also, really yes but it also works with an sd card so right. nexar the the camera okay so uh i think i bought it for like 125 right i think that was about it right yeah that's cheaper than one year subscription to owl cam yeah right i can definitely tell you that it, it was either 125 or 150 i can't remember exactly but this thing works with your cell phone and with the cloud so uh when you go to drive, it automatically records your drive no matter what, right. uploads it to the cloud, or it'll actually transfer it directly to your phone if your phone and your web or your uh, dash cam are paired. Right. And then you can even use your phone as like... Um, to find out where your car is? Well, no. We'll I do that? Say, See, that's we'll what actually, Alcam does. Well, I know. No, what I'm saying is is this will actually let you use your phone as like a... like You can, you can view the camera, which I don't understand because oh, no, you're in cool. the driver's seat already. Like yeah. you know what you're looking at. Why do I need to you look at be a doing... screen that tells drive... me what my camera's looking at when I can just look at that? Right. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Anyway, I like Nexar. 
And that kind of basically seems to cover what you were just talking about. Like the only thing it no doesn't SD card or it anything, doesn't so. do that. What that the Alcam will do is it. See, the Alcam will come with that 4G subscription. So that oh, means the 4G. Oh. So you get that. You get that if you're away from the car. It's always um, keeping an eye on your car okay. and can upload. And then the other thing they do is if it gets stolen, they Did, replace wait, it. First off, let me ask you: Does that owl cam? It, it, I, I'm assuming because the word owl, it means it can look 360 degrees. It looks inside your vehicle and outside, or okay. you could turn it off. Okay, because I was just going to say, I, if it looks yeah. just out the front, obviously it can't see no. when people break in. But okay, I get it now. If owl you cam, if, yeah. if you go to the owl cam website now, and you could tell we're we're not sponsored by them because we're not we're speaking indifferently about them. I'm just. Talking but, about them, yeah, I'm not talking if, trash about them. I'm just, you know. But if you go to their website, they have videos of people that were breaking into people's cars that had Alcam, and you know, because what happens is, and it still does works on mine. If somebody gets into your car and like they don't put the key in the ignition, yeah, uh, light comes on, like a floodlight, and then it comes on twice as bright. So they know, oh, they're on camera. And the the cool thing is, is this camera is ca- captured people, and they've got the videos up on. You know, on the Alcam websites, you can see some of the stuff that they've been able to do. So, yeah, if the price has come down, do I want to spend it? I'm not sure. I don't like spending money. I'm really cheap like that. But maybe it's that extra peace of mind. You know, now I've just told everybody on the radio that it's just for show. <laughs> yeah. So come on in. Uh, you got yourself a new toy that I know I that. I did. I know that, Sean, it would be very, very I'm. I'm Happy very upset. With. I'm yeah. very upset that Sean is not here when I talk about this. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'll have to show him next week. But yeah, so we're going to Hawaii uh, later this year, and I kind of wanted to get a, a device that I could record. I don't want to have to carry on my cell phone and sit there in portrait mode and watch my and then have to trip over rocks or anything like that. Like I don't want to have to look at my camera and where it's pointed, right? right. But walk into a volcano or something. Yeah, yeah. especially in Maui, right? <laughs> Everywhere you step. Um, so I wanted to get something that I can just like set and forget. Like I can tell it to track something and then I can just walk right. and I can look around and enjoy my scenery and know that my camera is pointed at the exact thing that I wanted to point at. So I, I looked up online and found the DJI pocket Two. So I, I have experience with DJI. They make drones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bought the DJI Phantom four a while back. Um, great drone, awesome drone, but I just, Never really had time to fly it, so I sold it. But knowing DJI and knowing how good they are with their camp, uh, what do you call that? The the gimbal. Yeah. Right? The gimbal is what? The gimbal. Is on the bottom of the drone that. Yeah, that keeps the camera steady, right? right? It's whatever way you turn, it knows how to counteract that to keep that camera pointed in the right direction, right? So that's a gimbal. So knowing that they have experience with gimbal and it's a really good, I, I thought, well, this would be a perfect product. So I bought the DJI Pocket too and i'll show it on screen here if you're gonna check out our webcast now when i first off my first impressions when i got it it's a lot smaller than i thought even in the pictures yeah even in the pictures i mean it's about the size of what Um, well okay i'm gonna put my hand up next to it it's not even as big as my hand up to your pinky yeah this is uh, yes not even up to my pinky from from the base of my hand my wrist it's not even up to my pinky so it's about uh let's say uh roughly one two three four inches tall Looks like a small microphone. It does. Yeah. But it has a gimbal. And what I love about it is it, first off, it comes with a wrist strap. Mm -hmm. So I can put this around my wrist in case I drop it or let it off my hand. If I'm not watching it, it's not going to fall and hit something. Nice. Then it's super easy to use. And it even has a built-in preview screen. So you can look at the screen and what it's looking at. Oh, no, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then it's also a touch screen so I can make all my uh, setting changes. Um. But then you can again, you can just set it and forget it. So you first off, you look at the preview screen, find out what you want to focus on. It has a you, camera mounted on top of it. It has a camera like mounted a on top one. of it in a gimbal. So right. it, it it makes that smooth movement. You know, like you think about Hollywood movies, how they do those action scenes where the camera seems to float around the car. Like a steady cam, yeah. Like a steady cam. That's a gimbal, right? Mm-hmm. So it's gonna use that same kind of thing. So anyway, yes, it has a camera on top, but um what I can do then is God, I lost my train of thought That's right okay. there. I was going That's somewhere, okay. and I had I was trying to wrap it back in. All right. Uh, so the gimbal on top, uh, the touch screen, um, floating gimbal. Yeah, floating gimbal. Hold you on. Can walk around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, okay. Where I set and forget. Yep. Right. Okay. Go. So the set it and forget it, right? Right. So you can just basically point this at whatever you want. 
you draw or you click on it and just say, follow this. And then as you walk around, no matter what direction you turn, it the camera will turn, tilt, pan, whatever it needs to do to keep that object in the center of your frame. So you don't have to keep adjusting the camera like no. you're holding a you know no. smartphone. As long as you don't make more of a more of a more than like a forty five degree turn, right? It'll keep the frame in focus. Oh no, that's pretty awesome. And so so yeah, so like if you're just on a hike and you have this peak in the background and you just want to focus on the peak, you can do that and then just simply walk with the camera in front of you. No matter if you make a quick little minor adjustment with your body, right. it'll keep that focus in the background now what about a station like a that that's for a stationary object you know i see you're you're in hawaii and you see this beautiful boat that's on the water you want to you're walking yeah. by it you want to capture it and it's kind of a floating cool video as you're moving you're getting that now what about a, a moving object can it can it, can it do that it, it can track a moving object so if you have it in the in the mode to track all it takes is for you to be looking at that object tapping on it and then it will start tracking it immediately now what made you decide to buy this one what was well, the kind of the, the first off the brand mm -hmm. DJI right. makes it right. I, I have, I've had their drones. I know they are good with the gimbal. I know they're good with the camera. And speaking of that little device that I just held in my hand, that's not even four inches tall. I, I can record 4k video at 60 frames a second. Oh, it does 4k. I didn't know that. In Dolby. Wow. So you're getting all the natural sounds, uh, of the, of you're getting you're everything shooting. from it. That's and then there's cool. even add-on things to it. You can add on a Bluetooth connection, which is basically an external mic that has a wind cover, you know, the little fuzzy, looks like yeah. a rabbit's foot on the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a wind cover. You can basically have that remotely connected to this device. So you can have somebody mic'd up and they're, and they're the ones providing audio, even though this gimbaled camera is recording them from, I don't know, 10, 15 feet away. Wow. That's so pretty amazing. It's, it's, now, it's how do you get the video all, off of it? Is it it's onto so a SD card. A SD card? Cool. Yep, and it supports up to 256 gig, gigabyte or gigabit car, uh, gigabyte carbs. Yeah, right. Almost, it's easy I, for you I to almost, say. I almost did it to you. <laughs> um, no, it supports up to 256 gigabyte cards. And then um, let's see. What, what, else? Is, what, is it, what about the price on that? Oh, the price? Uh, oh. It's, it's not the greatest. That's $75 then. No, 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 no. Uh, I paid $350. All right, but you got a camera. You got a camera that you don't have to worry about your smartphone. It's a gimbaled 4K, 60 frames a second camera, exactly. Uh -huh. And I can connect my smartphone up to it and have it as like a preview monitor if I nice. wanted. Right. So yeah, it's pretty darn cool. Looking forward to seeing the videos. Now uh, this is going to be the trip to Hawaii. You'll do that. Yeah, right. We're going to Maui in August. All right. Uh, and so yeah, we'll be there. I'll be recording videos. Um, who knows? If I get a chance, I may even just record a little tech, tech thing. I'm wondering, could you put it in your pocket? Like I'm just yeah, just that's a thought. Literally, why it's called pocket. So you put it in your pocket, and you're walking down. Yeah. The, it's capturing. Look, look oh, I mean, that is that's, great. That that's the case it comes in right there. And that it's is really cool. Literally, no bigger than my hand. Right. Very and, nice. And as 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 thick as two fingers. Yes. Now to get more info on this one, if our listeners want to look uh, it up, I'd just say go to DJI.com. Very cool. We can take a quick break. We come back with more of Tech Talk Radio. Something that you want to buy. I've been wanting to buy. Maybe <laughs> you could talk me into it. Uh, if you're looking for tech that can extend your data, we'll, we'll tell you about that coming up. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Justin Lemmy. Send us a tweet at Tech Talk Radio. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Mike Nelson from Mystery Science Theater and RiffTracks.com, and you're listening to the greatest show on the planet, Tech Talk Radio. And welcome back to Tech Talk Radio. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Justin Lemmy. So, we were talking during the break uh -huh. uh, about something that I was, I'm going to buy, but uh, I honestly, I think we can turn this into a segment because I think everybody needs to consider this. I And I have been considering it for a couple of years and still haven't done it. Um, and I know it's not that difficult to do, but it's not. Difficult. Do I really need to do it? That's the thing. Well, uh, yes and no. I right. mean, so I can only speak for myself, right? And I have two two terabyte drives in my computer just a single drive right that's are these store... m2s or ssds uh m2s no 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 i'm sorry they're just regular old hds right right, right? just okay. just regular old metal discs right spinnies spinnies oh my lord um <laughs> and they're getting older and i've already had a failure of one right thankfully because of a chronos true image i was able to get that backup get rescue, of that yeah. drive and i was able to put it back on there but again it's just a single drive and it's on my computer that I literally have to keep my home PC running all the time. 
to, to be able to access, access this yeah. stuff. My and Plex this could, this, library, yeah. you know, photos, this, music. Photos. If I want to run Home Assistant on my PC, I got to do that on my home PC. And my home PC is more of a gaming PC, right? I don't want to have to dedicate its life to just sitting there idle at night right. with nothing happening. So I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I want to get a NAS because, one, I want more storage because I want to also run VMware at home. And I know right. we talked about VMware in the last segment. I want to be able to run my own ESXi host with my VMs on it so I can put my home assistant on a VM. I can put my Raspberry Pi Pi hole on a VM. I can do those things and then get, I don't have to use Raspberry Pis everywhere throughout the house. Right. I can have them on one physical box. So I started thinking about it. I was like, I'm just going to buy the whole network setup. But to do that, I thought, well, first off, I need a rack. Right. So I have to go and buy a rack. Now, I don't need a full-on IT rack that's, you know, eight feet tall. I was thinking like a five-foot rack, right? right? So I was thinking, okay, get that. Ooh, oh, that's kind of pricey. 200, yeah. 200, 200 bucks. Okay, all right, I can do with that. Now I got to get a UPS. Mm -hmm. Oh, crap, a rack-mounted UPS? Mm -hmm. That's like $500. Okay, all yeah. right, I can deal with that. All right, now I got to get the server. Okay, I can get one on eBay, right? A right. used Dell 720, right. rack-mounted, full-rack server, right? <laughs> right? Talking real server here. Yeah, yeah. I can get that for like 350 Right. Okay, that's cool. Oh, wait, but it doesn't come with any hard drives. Yeah. Okay, so it takes six hard drives. Okay, so that's like another $600 if I want to get like the one terabyte version. Okay, yeah. cool. So there's another. Okay, well, now I want to get a NAS. Right. Okay, and I need to get the NAS chassis. Oh, wait, that's like 800 bucks alone. Now I got to get 16 drives. <laughs> and they've got to be big drives. <laughs> right, yeah. That's going to be like another 1200 Yeah. So all of a sudden, my little home lab project turned into like $3,000 or more of stuff. Just to be able to access data. And I presented that to the wife and she, <laughs> she didn't take it well. I can't picture her right now. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't even say anything after that. I went back to the drawing board. Okay. And by the drawing board, I meant I went down and cracked open a cold one and watched YouTube videos. Yeah. And I came across one of my favorite YouTubers right now. And I want to give him a shout out. All right. He's in the industry. Yeah. Network Chuck. Network Chuck. Network That's what he goes Chuck. by on his Network YouTube. Network Chuck on okay. his YouTube. Cool. Yep. So I found his videos, and it was like an angel was sent from heaven because <laughs> the very first video title that I saw of his said, you need a NAS now. Oh, it's like a sign. And I was like, why, yes, I do, Network <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> yes, I do. The look on your face. <laughs> what can you help me with, sir? So I clicked on his video and I sat and watched that 20 minute video. Right. And I how to create up, your own NAS? Well, yes, right. but using products that are readily available. Cool. I came up with a really good solution. And here's another promo for another company. All right. Synology. Synology. All right. What now, do they do? Syn Synology is a company that basically makes uh, NAS for home and small business or even medium business. Uh, Synology, so it'd be S Y N O L O G Y. That you got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. L O G Y dot com. Anyway, they're uh, they're they're out of Taiwan. They're out of Taiwan. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking, okay, and they they also make enterprise versions too. But mm -hmm. for the small user, home user, small business, medium business, that's kind of where they shine. Um, anyway, so they make these small NASs. and what's awesome about it is Network Chuck was talking about this particular company and how their NAS comes with their own operating system built into it. It's an all-in-one. You don't need to buy a rack. You don't need to buy a full-on server. You don't need, it's all enclosed. It's like a massive external hard drive, right? So and it does like it, how do you plug days. into it? How do you plug into it to have access? Network. So the you, network. you just plug in a cap, Cat6, Cat5, Cat5 five. Cat6 cable, yeah. whatever you got. You get into the configuration. You configure with your own IP, what all the... But the thing is, is it's got a beautiful graphical user interface. Right. It's got a lot of statistics built into it. It has its own private cloud. You can... And, and, and let's say, okay, for instance, you and me, right? We, right? we do Tech Talk Radio. You're in Tucson, Arizona. I'm in Denver, Colorado. Right. What if I want to make some video content for the show? How do I send it to you right now? Dropbox or Google Drive, yeah. right? Which yeah. takes forever. 
And then you have Dropbox or Google looking at whatever you're doing because yeah. we all know they look at your stuff. Yeah. Anyway, with Synology, if I had a Synology at home and you had one there, our folders would sync automatically. Oh, are you all kidding me? All I would me? need to do is edit my file on my computer, drop it into my Synology sitting on my desk, and within minutes, depending on your internet connection, your right. race may vary. <laughs> You would see it within minutes in your Synology. Now that's not bad. I didn't know they could do that. Now what? what yeah. are they, but is no. So we talked They're about. They're a little expensive. Well, with three thousand dollars plus all that space required for the rack and all that other stuff. Okay, and power. Versus, yeah, and power. A and, server and a NAS, a full-on NAS, take a lot of power. All right. So with the one that you're looking at, okay. do, do they make them for? You know, I mean, a lot of this stuff would be for you know. Small business. Yeah, small or, business or home user or power user. So do they make it for the home user, for the power user? They do make it for the, uh, the home user and power user. Um, they have a one one drive system uh -huh. that would just simply be one backup drive, which is, doesn't really mean much for purposes, but it's a backup drive. Or they've got a two drive system that you can put into RAID, so right. striping or parity. Um, and then you're starting to get into the... Um, uh, what you may call it, the, the redundancy portion right. of this. Uh, and that's where it really shines is the redundancy. Or if you go with the four base system, which is what I'm thinking about going with, um, you can put it into raid. So you can have raid five uh, or, or whatever on uh, that particular uh, system. And that is where backups really shine because you can actually lose an entire hard drive and not lose all of your data. Right. Your data is either striped or mirrored across all of your disks. Nice. So if you lose one disk, you just have to take that one disk out, put in a brand new one, and it will rebuild all of that data onto that new disk. What so is now it? you're back to being redundant. Well, now what I'm what I'm hearing, and I like you, so you're going on this trip, right? Yeah. Uh, and personal if, cloud too, by the way. So if you had a you know a disk station at your home, um, you can get an app on your smartphone yep. so that if you're, uh, you know, you copy the stuff, stuff from your, um, uh, you know, DJI pocket, yep. pocket two, yep. it would go to your phone. It can then using that app sync that video. So it's on your disc station. So you don't At have home. to worry about losing any 6,000 miles away. That's pretty amazing stuff. All right. So the, the rough spot is always, well, how much would this technology be? Yeah. So, okay. So Synology is not cheap. Now, here's another thing that you should know before I even mention price, because I need to be full disclosure. They, the way Synology works, and not just Synology, other companies. I'm not going to go into other companies' names. I'm talking about Synology for the good, but I also want to mention the bad. Right. They encrypt your data into their own proprietary language. That's how they're able to manage the transfer of data across their RAID systems and how they can do all the stuff that they do with the operating system is... They have to convert your data into their own proprietary uh, encryption. Thus being, if you ever leave Synology, Ooh. you cannot take your disks to anywhere and get your data off your disks. Oh, I don't like that. Your disks are always going to be basically, in a way, owned by Synology because the only way you can get your data off of a Synology is if you just simply have a different NAS hooked up to your system and just copy the contents from one to the other. And then you would have full access to your data. But Dude, that's like telling me the ice cream man is outside in a truck and I go out there and he's giving me a cone full of mashed potatoes. It's, you know, it's well, a, no, hold I on. mean, it sounds good, I, no, but I get it. No, I get what you're saying, but here's the thing. If you're a customer Synology and you like it, why would you ever need to get rid of it? But here, here's my problem. Right. As we, we saw, we mentioned them earlier. Okay. Al Cam. Look what happened. They went away, and a lot of people were left, you know, like, oh, suddenly I have well, to pay well, more money. Or, oh, or, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? It's no, like, no, no. I think we're going the wrong way on this one. No. They don't own your data. They don't ever put it in the cloud. You'll, you have your data on your system. Right. As long as the unit works, it's available to you. If the unit itself failed, but the disks were all okay, you can just put them back into a different Synology. It's just... It's kind of like when, okay. whenever you're in their ecosystem, you have to stay. For instance, another example, people have either Google Home or they have Amazon Alexa. Right. Right? Or Amazon Echo. Once you become an Amazon Home or a Google Home, 
you don't really go away from that, right? You right. just kind of just you just kind of become one of them. That's all I'm saying is once Got you're it. a Synology customer, you're going to be a Synology customer for life. And to give them the benefit of the doubt, they haven't been around since January of 2000. So yes, they, they're not a new company. No, they've been around a while. Uh, it's uh, so you're going to pull the trigger on it. I, or I think know? I am, and I think I am. And so I initially I mentioned my first build was like three thousand five hundred dollars. My wife said. I will divorce you if you do that. Um, so I had to uh, come down from that. And initially, then my next was about $1,500 with right. Synology. Uh, now I've decided instead of going with the six base system, I'm going to go with the four base system. Synology by itself is for the four bay NAS system is $500. That's a lot better. But I still need to buy all the hard drives. So I need four hard drives in each hard drive. For two terabytes is around $100 each. Right. Uh, and you can't use just regular old hard drives. They have to be rated for NASs right. because the the NAS works 24-7. Yeah, it's always going. It's always going. Yeah. So you've got to get those, you know, I don't know what you call it, the the, the extreme version of the hard drive or whatever. Right. The, Will it run SSD? the rugged, the Will... rugged. Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll run SSD. Cool. I like but that. But it has to be one of those ruggedized extended mm -hmm. life SSDs. Uh, right. But yes, it will run that too. If you get it, you got to give us the update on it. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, I think in all together, $1,200, 1200 $1,300. That's a lot better but than I will what be you were able, looking at. <laughs> but I will be able to run VMware. I'll be able to put, like I said, all my home assistant and stuff, but I'll also be able to run things like Kubernetes, Docker. These are things that I want to learn for my own career to be able to be better as an IT. So to learn Kubernetes, to learn Docker, to learn Ansible, I can do it in a playground of virtual machines. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We come back, a real quick uh, app of the week we want you to take a look at uh, from my son, Ricardo, and I will share that with you coming up. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Justin. Let me find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash tech talkers. Thanks. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? Uh, this is Tom Arnold, and uh, you're listening to uh, Tech Talk Radio. They're really great, and uh, I love them. Hey, how about a copy of Windows? Uh, can I get a laptop? Welcome back to Tech Talk Radio. I'm Justin Lemmy. I'm Andy Taylor. So I uh, spent some time with my son, who I told you is kind of a techie. He's also mm -hmm. a producer of music. Um, he, he does rap, hip-hop, and he's really good at it. He's got some stuff there that uh, one song that I think could go viral uh, that I'm going to try and help him with, and another song that should be in the next movie, Creed Three. That uh, I told him, I said I'm going to see what I can do to help Ooh. you. Really good stuff. But I was talking to him about. He said there was a guy that he knows that created some music, and he did it on his smartphone. He did it on his iPhone using the little microphone that's down there. He mm -hmm. did the beats, the music, the backtrack, the whole bit. Oh, all... I think I've heard of this. It's so amazing. So if you love music, you know somebody who loves music and wants to create music. It's a free app, 25 million users worldwide. It's called BandLab. That's mm. B-A-N-D-L-A-B. Uh, again, it's an app you use on your phone. It does all the mixes. It's pretty amazing. So if you like music, you want to experiment a little, definitely take a look at this one, BandLab, and you can find it at your app store for both uh, iPhone and Google Play. It doesn't cost a dime. doesn't cost anything to create the beats. It's just a lot of fun. They started out... They're really getting people into it. So definitely take a look at that one. That's really cool. All right. That's it for this week's Tech Talk Radio. Uh, thank you for being here. Well, Absolutely. Hopefully next week we'll have the entire crew there, and we'll see if you uh, get any progress on your name. No, no, no. Next week you're off, man. I'm. I'm oh, I'm, that's right. That's yes. right. Yeah. I, no, no, I've no, got to no, sit no. one out. Your, I took your tech card, bro. <laughs> I'll be sitting it out in the corner. Uh, I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Justin Lemmy. Have yourselves a great week.